what if I told you that there are only three tools you need to learn in order to be able to make money online with bug bounties and ethical hacking? And honestly, if you're not doing bug bounties, this is still valid. There's only three tools that I really think that you should be comfortable with in order to become successful with web hacking, recon, and so on. The reason why I say three tools is I like to break down the tool usage into three different categories. Obviously, the first one is always the asset discovery. Sometimes you may not even need this, but if you're going against large organizations like the IBMs, Ford, Yahoo, Spotify, Disney, whatever it is, then obviously you want to do some recon and you want to find some assets and you want to prioritize them. I've done a bunch of videos on these. I'm not going to fully cover how to use them. I'm going to just go through it very really quickly. But again, you want to get good at finding assets, but not get lost in doing this entire thing. So your second one is your directory brute forcing, parameter brute forcing, whatever you want to call it. This is what I call content discovery. Nmap is kind of in that category. You can go take a step further and do like some port scanning. In a lot of cases, port scanning isn't required, especially if you are doing a pen test or uh, something that's very much gated. But you still need to do directory brute forcing and never hurts to do it even on a single application. So that's another one to keep in mind. And your third one is your proxy tools and this is your zap your burp suite and in a lot of cases you can get these for free or if you don't want to get them for free you want you can buy it and in case if you want to use burp they have a community edition that you can use that's pretty good for a beginner or for an entry level honestly i pay for burp suite and i only use the repeater tab and sometimes i used intruder and obviously i use it to proxy through things and then obviously you don't have to pay for any of these things for proxy you can use chrome dev tools kind of messy and ugly but you can make it work these are the three tools that i think you genuinely need and i want to show you why you need them and how to use them and why they're important so the first one i mentioned is asset discovery Asset discovery is the idea or the, the process of looking for assets, obviously, and that's our subdomains, domains, and so on. In a lot of cases, you don't have to look for domains. If you want to do that, there's a bunch of videos on there, including on my channel. Go check them out. But when you want to look for a subdomain, especially in the early days, you can use AMAS or AMAS actually to look for these. AMAS has a bunch of different ways you can do it. Let's look at it really quickly. You can do Intel where it discovers Intel or data on your company. This could be like your ASNs. This could look for different domains they own and that sort of stuff. So they look for IPs, etc. So you can use that. It will give you an idea of all the things that they own. Then you have your Enum that enumerates the network. It looks for different subdomains, different assets under each of those different domains and maps an entire network for you. And then you can visualize it. You can track some changes. You can use a database and the DNS is to resolve DNS names at a high performance. You can use that one or the other option you have is Subfinder. I kind of use both, honestly, depending on what I'm trying to do. Subfinder is the one that I use very, very quickly. And I'm asking for the bigger projects for like tracking, visualization, this sort of thing. So you can do both. Again, I use Sublister for my quick scans, and you can easily do that by just typing in Subfinder, dash domain, you can give it a domain, dash all if you want to use all their different sources, and then CS is to just show the different sources that it's pulled this data from. So let's just run this really quickly. And as you can see, it takes a few seconds, but the reason why I wanted to show these sources is I want to show you that even though I am using some paid sources like security trails, I have a uh, census in here sometimes. Uh, I have a few on that I pay for, but you really don't need to pay for these things. You can use something like that as stage in your early days. If you don't want to make that investment, you don't have the cash that still does it. Rapid DNS is a free one. I didn't give it a, uh, any API keys on my end and you can see there is a bunch of different ones. So this is a really good start. You don't have to pay for this. And a lot of these, honestly, like census, like Shodan, all these different ones actually give you a limited API key, or you can apply for a research API key that has a higher limit that you can still use to expand your research and expand your targets. But honestly, this is a good place. And, you know, and it gives you a good list of subdomains and obviously you need to build up on this, but if you're doing a small pen test or a small engagement, this is more than enough to need you don't need to use a bunch of tools to do this the second tool you want to use is a directory brute forcer these are tools like forex buster i think it's one called directory brute force dir bust go buster fuff you name it i use ff it's one of my favorite ones and you can see you can give it a word list actually let's try and run fuff with help 
and there's a ton of options. You can do match and replace. You can look for different options. There are a ton of things you can do. You can actually use this to brute force for parameters after you find an endpoint. There's other different things you can do. You can also look for those endpoints and so on. FFuff is one that I use. It has its ups and downs. It's good, but I also sometimes use DIR search. Uh, it's in Python. It's a little bit slower, but it's more accurate than FFuff, but then FFuff is faster. So again, this is completely up to you. You don't have to use either one of these. You can pick whatever one that is more intriguing to you, more interesting to you, and use it for your day-to-day. -day. And of course, your last one is your burp suite or your proxy tools. I don't want to suggest burp suite because there's other ones that you can use. Again, you have Zap, you can use Chrome Dev Tools, but burp makes it easier. You're more than welcome to try whatever one you want. The point is to have something to take a look at the traffic that's being sent in the browser while you're making a request. And let me show you what I this means. What we're going to do is we're going to just grab our domain right here and we wanna make sure we're only going to get the traffic that's coming from this. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling Burp only get the traffic from my browser from this domain. And then I go to the proxy tab and I make sure it's only intercepting requests from anything that's in scope together. So that just limits it to this domain. And every time now I make a request here, it's gonna pop up right here in our browser and show it to us. And of course you can also go to your history right here and it shows every single different request that was in the background that you may have missed. So right here you can see it made a request of feedback, level one file, a uh, level.py. This is a request it made. We didn't see that request happen in the background and this is a response that it did. This is really helpful where you're looking at big applications that have multi-step API calls. For example, you update your profile, maybe it distributes different things to different endpoints. This is a good place to look at it. It also has those different calls. And of course, what you can do here as well in your proxy tab when you're intercepting is you can analyze your data that's being sent and everything that you want to do, everything that's being happening in your background, that's being shown here and you can send it to your repeater by either clicking Command R or I think it's Alt R or Control R on Windows and it sends it here and you can just see the response, see where it goes and kind of mess with it until you get the results that you want. While I don't want to spend time to show you how to use Burp Suite, the point of this video is to tell you, you don't need to overcomplicate things and use a series of tools, a bunch of different frameworks in order to become successful. And honestly, the more and more I talk to more successful bug bounty hunters, while a lot of them have these tedious tasks, these time consuming tasks or things that they don't want to do day to day, they have it automated. They do a lot of their good research and a lot of their work manually. And that's the one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that you don't need to rely on a bunch of tools. These tools should become a leverage to you or it could become a thing to you that you use in order to become more efficient and save time so you can focus your time and energy on actually looking for vulnerabilities. And the reason why I have Burp Suite in this video, as you can see on my screen, is because I want to show you that it also does a lot of the things that you do with other tools. So if you pay for it, you can use Intruder you can actually have Intruder do some brute forcing for you as well by just selecting right here, pressing add and doing your payload with a simple list. You can import your list into here, but honestly, I don't do that. Uh, it takes a lot of time and resources, but my point is to show you, you also don't need to have FFuff, Forex Buster and those kinds of things because you can do it directly through Burp Suite. And obviously you have other things like decoder. You can decode your base 64 or you can encode URL encoding and that sort of stuff. But the whole point is to show you, you don't need to use a bunch of different tools. And what you should do is you should master using these three tools and become really, really good at it and become very comfortable at using them day to day before you can get into hacking and it helps you become good at bug bounty, web hacking, or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Okay, that's all. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to make a video on any of these tools and show you how to use them one by one. And maybe we can do a series on bug bounty basics on tools, but I need to hear from you. You let me know what tools you wanna to see a video on and I'll see if I can make it happen. Okay, that's it. Do me a favor. If you're not a subscriber, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, drop me a comment, and let me know, hit that like button. And if you wanna go even a step further, hit that bell, make sure you don't lose a video or don't miss out on a video. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.